Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Threat Thursday. This time we have another special guest, Tim Frazier, who is a security strategist at Splunk. And we met earlier this year when we can still see each other physically in person at a uh, conference for defense or art into science. It's a conference focused on defense. And I saw some of the cool work that Tim has been doing. He has a tool called Attack Simulator that he'll be presenting at Black Hat Arsenal this year and has also been integrating that with sites. So welcome, Tim. How are you doing? Good, George. Thanks for having me on, man. Super excited to be here. Awesome, man. Thank you for uh, being on. And let's get to it. Can you talk to us about what you've been working on with uh, Attack Simulator and integration with Sight? Yeah, definitely. So let me just go ahead and share my screen so I can speak to a slide here while we're talking. So um, my, my attack simulator project that I worked on with a couple colleagues of mine, uh, Dave Harold and Kyle Champlin that you see here on this slide, we basically put together a lot of different components because what we wanted to do was help defenders who were wanting to simulate attacks actually observe what those attacks looked like in their environment. Um, and, and obviously using Splunk, like we work for Splunk, but you don't have to use Splunk. This is uh, just the way we decided to do it and kind of build some additional content on top of this and do some integrations so that we could show um, defenders how to better detect stuff that they're observing in the wild, right? So to kind of step through this slide a little bit, um, we, have, we have Splunk, uh, we have Phantom, which is Splunk's SOAR platform, um, both are available for free if you want to download Community Edition or the um, free trial version. Basically, we put an app together that uses the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator, the GitHub project um, to, that people are familiar with. And if you ever looked at MITRE ATT&CK, that's I'm sure what you've seen. Um, we have a simulation runner that when we select a particular test from the ATT&CK Navigator, we kick it off. It goes over to Phantom, does a series of things, including uh, pulling tests from Atomic Red Team, um, and then, you know, specifically for, for um, some of what we're talking about today, I really want to highlight the, the Scythe integration where I built a phantom app that talks to Scythe's uh, API and allows us to go ahead and automatically kick off a Scythe campaign against the Windows host, for example, right? So we can do both the um, attack atomic red team stuff, and then we can also do more advanced things together with uh, Scythe. So, what that, hap what that does is then it, it uh, actually runs it on a Windows host, and then there's a uh, Splunk Universal Forwarder there that sends the events back to Splunk, right? So that was the quick high-level version. There's obviously a lot more to it. Um, if you want to see more about this project, I would say, you know, check out our presentation at Black Hat Arsenal. It's coming up um, just in a few weeks. This is the, uh, the information for it. I saw George, you, and, and uh, I think probably Bryson are going to be presenting yep. at Black Hat Arsenal too, right? Yep, we're going to be doing the C2 matrix for, uh, for Black Hat Arsenals this year. It's a uh, first time presenting at Black Hat, so really honored and humbled and you know, awesome to work with Bryson on that and you know, give back to the community. I, I know we all feel the same, so yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Definitely. So um, the only other last thing I'll say is, you know, if you want more of the background or more of the, the story about why we put this together, how it works, all that type of stuff, like feel free to check out some of our previous presentations. Um, we did it at Splunk's user conference. And then also we presented at Sam's Blue Team Summit, as well as the uh, art and the science that you mentioned back in January. Perfect. And we'll link to all those on our blog post this week. Excellent. Thank you. All right, so now that we've kind of got the, the high level piece of what it is, I'm gonna jump real quick and show the, um, the GitHub page here, which is the adversary simulation, or you can also reach it at uh, att-ck simulator. Um, unfortunately, uh, GitHub doesn't like ampersands in the URL, so that's why we just also named it adversary simulation to be simpler. <laughs> Um, but basically, like I said, we're, we're building off a lot of stuff, right? The MITRE ATT&CK Navigator, uh, the Atomic Red Team from Red Canary. We make heavy use of Olaf Hartong's threat hunting app um, for a lot of his searches that he uses to point to specific uh, MITRE ATT&CK techniques, um, as well as I made an easy way to spin this up by forking uh, Chris Long's Detection Lab project. So if you want to try this, there's actually some detailed instructions here, um, especially under option A which will basically spin up a detection lab instance in AWS, which consists of two Windows boxes, or actually 
three Windows boxes, a uh, Splunk logger, and then a Phantom instance. So all this stuff will come pre-configured with a few simple instructions on getting that spun up. So that's what I have today, um, and we'll get ready to show what that looks like. Um, so one of the things that I did prior to this, and this is the attack sim app within Splunk, right? So you're probably familiar with the attack navigator, all the normal features you would see here, uh, multi-select, like I've got APT 33 selected right now. Um, you know, you can pick those things and say, these are the ones I want to focus on. You can load layers, shade colors, gradients, all that fun stuff. Um, but in addition to spinning up what I've got on the instructions is I also have an instance of um, Scythe running and I've connected that into Splunk in actually two ways, right? One is on the administration side. Um, if we look to connect this into Splunk, we would go to the settings and then scroll down um, and show the Splunk host, Splunk key, and Splunk port. Now, for all you security people out there that are watching this, which is probably most of you, don't worry, this infrastructure will be gone by the time you attempt to hack it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is a good caveat to put out there. But it's, it's just that simple, right? It's simply putting the IP, the port, and the key, and now anything that you do on site will be sent over to Splunk, which is very convenient as far as setting up, right? Yeah. So the Splunk side of that looks like this. So it's under, if you go to settings, data inputs, um, it'll be under the HTTP event collector, uh, which is a, basically a standard way to receive data into Splunk over HTTP or HTTPS. Um, the couple quick settings that you have to do, um, if you don't already use the HTTP event collector for your Splunk environment is under global settings, make sure all tokens are set to enabled. SSL is checked, and then by default, 8088 is the port. Um, you can change that to whatever you want, just have to make sure that that matches on the site side. Then you would go through the new token wizard to basically come up with the token, name it whatever you want. I've just called it Scythe here. This is the value that you will then copy and paste back over into this configuration screen here. So yeah, like you said, pretty straightforward and simple, and I'll show as we go through what those events that are coming from Scythe uh, that go into Splunk will will um, look like as we go through this. Okay, so um, on the attack simulator itself, right, like there's a lot of theory around this. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of MITRE attack stuff. Watch a different presentation about that. For this part of it, what you're going to see is that um, I can pick any one of these techniques. I'm going to go real simple and I'm going to say system network configuration discovery. Um, what we've got here on our right-click menu, it's supported by the attack navigator interface, is I can do a, a, a run test, which is what I'll do to actually kick this off. Uh, but first, before I do that, I want to view the executor. Now, I've set this custom link up to point to the Atomic Red Team project so we can see what specific commands are getting ready to get kicked off. Okay? So this is a, a simple version of the test. If I just want to do um, run this, this will open up the dashboard in Splunk called the simulation runner, which actually kicks off the test once I define a few more of the parameters. So the technique name and the technique ID came over from my attack navigator board. I select the asset that I want to run it on in my detection lab. It's either a DS domain controller or a Win 10 host. And then I can select from uh, saved searches that I might want to use to test this out. Uh, these are these ones that are mapped with a technique ID are from Olaf in his threat hunting app, which is super helpful uh, that he's already got those mapped over and we can validate to see if this detection will work like we want. So once I've kicked that off, this goes over to Phantom, which runs uh, a playbook within Phantom to do the logic necessary for this. And there's a lot more going on behind the scenes here. I don't wanna get into this too much on this particular call, but this playbook is what's happening in Phantom to kind of orchestrate this flow. Um, in the simple path that we're doing, it's doing a PowerShell and command.exe test, but I have a path here that I can do for Scythe, right? So if I pick a Scythe campaign, and I'll show how that works in a sec. All right, um, so back to my simulation runner. So let's see if this is complete. All I have to do is hit refresh. I didn't have to do anything over there. I was just showing you that Phantom playbook while um, we're waiting. Okay, so now I get to the end of it. This is the next event posted back from Phantom to Splunk says this was finished. 
And I can see I've got a bunch of different panels here that are going to show the events that come back from it. This is um, Olaf search. It does, in fact, return results here. And we can see the various commands that were executed, right? So that's helpful that we have a search that works for what we want. Um, I'm going to scroll down past some of these other panels, which are interesting, but for the purposes of this, I'm going to show um, some of these site events that we have that are shown up here. If I go back to this search panel and say, we've got anything that's going to have site in it. Let's double check why it's not showing up. Of course, demo gods, why? Um, so <laughs> this, is, this is where these, these uh, site events normally show up. Where... Is it because it ran an atomic red team one and not a site one? <sighs> George, you're the man. Yes, that's <laughs> why. Um, duh. Sorry, I guess so. Tunnel vision on that. Right. So I just ran Atomic Red Team. So we wouldn't expect to see any site events there. Thank you. So let's let's go back and rerun this a little more advanced with a site campaign that I have set up. Um, I've got this. I've got one called APT33 Lite that I'm going to do that consists of some various uh, tasks. But I've got one that I'm going to run first, actually, that's actually even quicker. It's called, um, let me go back to my campaign list, run then shut down. So this is a quick one that only has a couple actions and it's better for a short demo. So I give it the name, run then shut down, and I hit submit. And now that'll go back and run it. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> you can edit that part out about demo guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so we've kicked it off. Now, this while this is going, we can actually observe more of what's happening. In Phantom, we just kicked this new one off a few seconds ago. I know I'm bouncing around to a lot of stuff, but um, this script downloaded the, the, um, the Scythe campaign payload to the Windows endpoint. It's running it on the endpoint, and we can see that if we go back over here to Scythe, this window here, I look at run then shut down. We should see this become active in just a sec. There we go, active. Now it's on the DC. I can click into that. See, I, I joke that you don't need demo gods when you're using Scythe because it's the whole point of it is to run consistently over and over again. <laughs> yes, and it works. I just it works. forgot that I did the simpler version first. Um, so I have right. a question here. When you ran, um, this through Phantom, I saw some PowerShell there. Is that, that's a PowerShell command that goes out and downloads the executable that this particular command created, this particular yeah. campaign? Yeah, so let's, let's talk about that for a sec. So a couple different things going on. It, in Phantom, there's this concept of playbooks and there's a concept of apps, right? So one thing I did was I wrote a app for uh, Phantom for Scythe, right? That allows me to do some of these actions. I, I made it to where it will support eight different actions. One is that I'm using here is list campaigns and then list payloads for a matching campaign. So this allows me to query Scythe's API and says, hey, what are campaigns that I have uh, available? I use that campaign name that I submitted in Splunk to filter out for the specific campaign and then I'll use the list payloads action to actually get the download links. So that's what that looks like is in my playbook, you can see here's the list campaigns action, filter for the one that I submitted, list the payloads. I use a, just a custom function to format the download string that I'm gonna use. Then I, in PowerShell from Phantom, I run the PowerShell command on the Windows endpoint to download that. And then from command.exe, I'll run it, right? So Phantom's talking to the Windows host to tell it to do stuff, as well as talking to Scythe's API. Phantom's that orchestrator that's doing all those things. So by having a way to connect to Scythe from Phantom and um, connect to the Windows host, I can orchestrate the whole thing, right? The whole delivery of the payload and then watch for what's happening. Does that answer your question? Yes, and that's that's pretty cool. So you're using Phantom to connect to a Scythe API to run the campaign, pull the payload, execute it, and then the back end, the administrative part of Scythe to send back the logs to Splunk and say whether it was successful or not. And then of course you're actually seeing what is happening from the defensive perspective through Olaf's um, Sysmon uh, configuration and uh, alerts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're using that, um, you know, 
monitoring Sysmon on the Windows host and seeing stuff, like to your point, I can see here a decoded PowerShell command that was sent from Phantom to the host. This is where I actually am downloading that, um, that particular payload, right? And this is what I'm calling it, this, you know, numbers.exe. And then I can see here during this time, this is where I actually executed it. And Phantom is what executed that. Now, I can watch for the other events that show up around here to see what Scythe had actually done. Um, now, here is the panel that I built to show the Scythe events, right? So I can see these are the events that Scythe is sending directly to Splunk so that I can kind of marry up what is happening from a Scythe perspective and I can see what's, what's going on there. So I can see there was a controller shutdown that happened. Um, these look like they're in reverse order. So let's see, earlier in the process, there was a, a command slash C directory listing of program files directory, right? And we can see the output there. Um, a print screen, unfortunately we got a response, unable to take screenshot, right? Good to know that that didn't work for whatever reason. And then here's a run, who am I, um, you know, to see the user that's, that's on the box. So I can see all the stuff that the attacker side is doing. And then from defensive perspective, I need to make sure that I'm observing that. So one of the other panels that I added down here is a more generic, just all Sysmon events from the particular host during the time window that I did this test, right? So my playbook posts an event to Splunk when it starts the test and it posts an event when it ends the test. And I use those two times to bracket all these dashboard panels. So the idea is that, hey, I'm a defender. I wanna kick off either a, an atomic test or a more advanced test from a Scythe campaign that either I've built or one of my red team members has built for me. And then I wanna observe side by side all of the things that Scythe is telling me it did and then all the output from either Sysmon or whatever um, telemetry I'm getting from my endpoint or in my network to make sure that I, as a blue teamer, am detecting this stuff, right? right. So one of the things that we did during this process was run at who am I? So I want to go to this panel and see like, okay, all my Sysmon events, I want to make sure that I see that who am I in there during this time frame. And this date time range is a custom date time range that I built, you know, using that start and end time. And I see here's my two events. One is gonna be an event code one and one's an event code 10 from uh, Sysmon where we see that who am I showed up in those events, right? So back to the other thing that I do to bring this full circle from this uh, attack simulator perspective is let's say I've got this uh, detection search and for whatever working, it's, it's or for whatever reason it's not detecting, right? I'm like, okay, well for now I need to mark it have data not detected. And what that'll do is back here on the attack simulator, uh, attack navigator, this is not, this auto refresh is not part of the, the general attack navigator, but it's right. something we added for our Splunk app. It'll actually color code it based on what you select. So once I've gone through this process and I fix this search to make it detect right, I can say now I'm detecting it and it'll turn it blue, right? Nice. So the idea is that then you're using this iteratively as a detection engineer, you're updating your, your, your you know, visualization to show what you're detecting, the, the uh, techniques that you care about, and you're doing both basic level and more advanced with Scythe. That's fantastic. Well, really appreciate you uh, spending some time here today showing us this, uh, this integration you've created. And obviously, thank you for giving back all this stuff back to the community. It's uh, pretty cool stuff. And um, I'll definitely link to your Black Hat arsenal because you're going to dive into this uh, way longer, right? I think that's a, an hour long presentation. Yeah, there's an hour time slot. It's more like 30 minutes, but yeah, we will be there and we'll be there live to answer questions too. So, you know, there's like a chat and stuff like that. So definitely come to that. But um, also I hope you include a link to the GitHub project, which has, you know, instructions on how to get it up and going. But um, at Tim Fraser one on Twitter, love to, you know, hear any feedback or if anybody wants help in, in getting it going. So Awesome. Thank you again.